Hello everyone, this is Scramble and I'm your host. Today we have an interview with Joan about an ICO and a project that's going to be really interesting for you guys. So Joan, what's up? How's it going with you? Hi, how are you today? Good oh, to hear great. from you. Great, thank you for asking. That's great. How about, how's it going for you? Good, good. We're, uh, we're here in Chiang Mai. That's where I retired to after trading for 25 years. And for the last five, I've traded cryptocurrencies. Oh, that sounds yeah. amazing. So you're doing it full time for sure. And that means you know what you're doing, right? Yeah, I've been trading for a long time. In the crypto space, I've traded for about five years. I belong to about uh, 40 of the top exchanges right now, which in itself was a job just getting onboarded at all of those exchanges. Yeah, for sure. We're going to talk about that very soon. Let's head over to the okay. interview. So we're going to have the first question. What is your background and how do you think that's going to help the industry? Well, I've been a member of eight different exchanges in the last 25 years and I've traded extensively. And uh, how am I going to help that in the industry is basically I'm bringing all the things that I know from the financial industry to the crypto industry. That's interesting, right? So you know the issues, you can feel the issues, you can feel what people and how they feel frustrated about all these things going around the crypto space, what kind of implementations needs to be done. And I'm sure you have kind of a lot of knowledge around this topic by having so many years into the industry, right? So you're coming up yeah, with a boost. I, right? Like I said, I have 25 in the financial side and five in the crypto. That's quite a lot for sure. And I'm sure that there are not many people like you involved in the space with that much knowledge contributing to the infrastructure of the ecosystem, right? Absolutely, yeah. I know all the I know all the problems with the crypto space firsthand, especially with the crypto exchanges. That's you great. know they lack they they lack customer service, uh, outstanding tickets for days if not months. All of that has to be addressed. Of course, and many other problems for sure, which we're going to cover in this video presentation. So, let's get yep. into what is your launch about. Uh, launch about is at Encarus, and we're having an ICO. And basically, what we are is we're a combination of E Trade and Coinbase on one platform. So we're a broker dealer, but we also fill people on crypto cryptocurrency orders. That's pretty much in a nutshell what we do. That's amazing. And it's basically it's basically something that I created because it's something that's needed in the industry, in the finance industry, and also in the crypto industry. And a validation of that has been CME Bitcoin futures. Of course. Of course, right? So you're actually having the product ready. The platform is kind of ready, right? Yes, the platform's ready. The only thing we have to do right now is link up to a cryptocurrency exchange and get our platform onto those. That's it. Everything else on the financial side is already done. The platforms for that, the front ends for that are all done. Mm -hmm. That's great to hear, right? So. Of course, let's head over forward and talk about what motivated you to create this project. Uh, you know what motivated me? Being a victim of four exchange hacks in the five years that I've been in this industry. And most of the times, I wasn't even in crypto. I had fiat there. And the last straw for me was Bitfinex with the $72 million hack. That's where I swore off cryptocurrencies. Oh. I walked away from them and forgot all about it till the community director, Craig, came into my office of February of this year and told me the market was starting to heat up again. So I joined exchanges, onboarded at, like I said, 30 plus exchanges, put money in, this time not a lot, just a little bit because there's no trust in the ecosystem, and turned it into a substantial amount of money, but the same problem still existed. And I thought to myself, you know, it's just a matter of time to one of these exchanges get hacked and I lose 30 or 40 percent of my money again. So that's why I came up with Encorus out of the frustration of five years of trading in the ecosystem. Which I think a lot of people can relate to. Of course. You know, but big profits but big profits make them forget really easily. It could happen at any time though. Yes. It's yeah. very volatile, especially if you're playing with the altcoins. Uh, yeah. for some people it's kind of a game of being lucky for the other ones. It's different because they do the market analysis, they do the right thing that needs to be done, uh, like the research and everything that's necessary in order to trade, and they're not aiming on that luck, like profiting a couple of hundred percentage in a few days. Absolutely, right? so, yeah. 
you know, usually that what's making people forget about these hacks, which are kind of going around with many exchanges, and this thing should be not that forgettable, right? So we should have a exactly. solution for that, which is kind of anchorous. Yes, exactly, because those risks don't exist in the financial world. You could leave your money there, parked there, and it's insured, and you could leave it in financial assets, and they're insured. So I'm bringing that world to the crypto world. That's basically what we're doing. And we're the first to market with it. You know, there'll be other competitors as soon as we come out and start moving along. Other people will start doing it too. But we'll be the first to market because I understand the needs of the crypto space. Of course. You've been 25 years in the financial side. In the financial, but five years in the crypto space. I've traded, I've traded in this crypto space a long time. <laughs> And you know the issues, yeah. you feel the issues, you, you have the yeah. ability to see those frustrations coming in. And I'm mm -hmm. sure that that's why this project born out of frustration. And it's going to help a lot of people, especially the entire industry, from what you say. So we're just making a quick example. People have Bitcoins. They want to kind of sit back a little bit for a few days. So they sell into USD. Right? So those yep. USD will be insured. Yep, they'll be insured because they'll have an account at the broker dealer. They'll come to us, they'll liquidate their bitcoins, and then their dollars will be staying in a SIPC insured broker dealer. No problem with that. And while they're waiting for bitcoins to rally up, they could buy Apple, they could buy Amazon, and they can sit on those and get a dividend. Yeah. Of course. And no, then as soon as they see as soon as they see Bitcoin go up again. They could liquidate those shares and buy bitcoins on our platform and be back in the market. And they don't have to go through the banking system and the bank wires and the days that it takes for that. None of that. That's crazy. That's crazy to yeah. do that. So if you're able to make this process faster and smoother, you're kind of giving people everything they need, right? So especially in this insurance uh, regarding mm -hmm. this um, type of example we have just explained. Now comparing it to the, a normal exchange where you sell off and whether you do it in USDT in Feather or in USD your money is not secure no it's it's at risk <laughs> it's at risk even if it's in USDT we know the story about Tether we won't go into that but that's at risk too like you were telling me later that they're up to 800 million in uh, Tethers market cap yes that's, yes that's interesting <laughs> that's interesting <laughs> it's interesting how how, it's right? interesting because I because they turned away all their American customers. They have problems with their bank lines, and yet they they've exploded their market cap. I that's a, that's a nice trick. I wish I could do that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty hard to do that for sure. For, for, yeah, for exactly all of us. Yeah, uh, you need to be probably involved in specific things to be able to do safe and things such as you know that kind of movement, right? So. That's kind of difficult. Now, you know, it's very clear from, from me that uh, by having insurance, at least in USD, is something that people would feel a lot more comfortable by start yeah. trading, right? So we will be able to see those people in the trading section that kept saying that the crypto space is too risky for them. Crypto space is such a risky place that there's nothing insured, there's nothing under a hundred percent security from this perspective in USD of course I, I I'll tell you when I first started five years ago I had a uh, an idea to have a Bitcoin a crypto hedge fund and I went to lunch with a bunch of traders I knew in Chicago and they were all writing me checks and I told them hold on guys I'm like there's two problems here there's exchange wallet hacks and there's exchange defaults when I can figure it out, I'll take your money. And I can never figure it out. I came up with an idea of maybe having tranches where I never had more than a certain amount of money at certain exchanges. And that wasn't acceptable to me. So I did not do anything with it. And I just kept on trading my own money where I felt comfortable from rather than lose people's money for new, no fault of my own, but just on the exchange level through a hack. So I, did, so I, was, I was way ahead of the crypto hedge fund game, but I didn't feel comfortable with the risk. <laughs> It is yeah. a half risking ball for sure. Exactly. And, uh, it's kind of difficult to handle that type of situations in case of a hack, right? So from 
company perspective, it's very, very difficult to handle. Right? Yeah. So there's a lot of motivation going around creating a project like this as soon as you know which are the problems of the industry. So if you can cover up them with great solutions which are making the industry a lot better and they're offering doors for people uh, to come in and uh, run trading as it should be, because this is decent, this is normal, this is the way it should be, right? Exactly, this is the way. Our onboarding process is much more streamlined because it's like opening an account at a bank, it's simple. Open an account that is a broker dealer, it's simpler than a crypto exchange. So that's streamlined too. That's another th uh, problem that we're solving where it's it's practically four clicks of the button and you have an account. Four clicks, right? And so we're talking about one, two minutes. Yeah, absolutely. 15 at the most. 15 at the most. And then you can go to your bank and you're sending your money to a broker dealer so you have no problems with the fiat banks. And then once it's at once it's at the broker dealer, you could buy crypto or you could buy financial assets. And that's and that's the quick and seamless onboarding that we want to offer to people too, which they can't get now. I mean, Coinbase in America has probably got, uh, if not a three-week lace, possibly a one-month wait with all the customers they get. Every time Bitcoin goes higher, they get 100,000 new customers in one day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. I've seen that. I was reading yeah. around that topic. That is happening. So that's kind of difficult, yeah. right? So people won't have problems from this perspective. It's going to be quick. They can set their account up in a couple of minutes because this is the right way to trade. Not yes. like it's happening nowadays in the exchange where you're exposed to too many risks, right? So, sorry, just this and, is the right way to do it. And, you know, just the, most of the diehard uh, crypto guys all talk about decentralization. But you know what? That's a few years off, and I don't have the time to wait for the technology. I want to do it with the tools that we have available now because no one's come out with a viable decentralization exchange or way of doing it that's fast and cost effective. Now it'll come to pass, but it'll be a few years off and like I said, I don't have time to wait for that. Of course, billions are coming into the space on a daily basis, so there's Absolutely. no time for, for yeah. five years, right? So that's for sure. Now, uh, why do you think people should use Anchorus? Uh, because basically we'll have a platform where everything's available to them. So right now, if you have a stock account, you can transfer your stock account to us and you're in crypto immediately and you go back and forth to the different financial assets including Bitcoin futures we're going to have on there too and the more different financial products that come on Bitcoin options are coming on next March we're getting the Nasdaq just made an announcement that they're gonna have a Bitcoin futures so you have more and more financial products that are coming on that the crypto guys want to get involved with I mean if you hold your if you hold your bitcoins in a wallet you may want to hedge your, some of your exposure with Bitcoin futures. I, I think the I think the Bitcoin futures are really going to make for mass adoption because now Amazon and Apple they can take crypto and they can hedge their exposure with the Bitcoin futures. Yeah, so now you start to get the mass adoption rate that everyone's been waiting for, That's and we want to help that. And we want to help that with uh, being out there as a broker for Bitcoin futures in a regular in a highly regulated way. You're going to take part of that specific infrastructure of this Bitcoin futures that's going to be involved, right? So, Absolutely, because most of the guys in the futures market don't understand crypto. So I'm bridging both of them together. I know the futures side and I know the crypto side, and that's how I'm going to be able to bring them in. And on our platform, we're also going to have education, because when I started doing this, I didn't know how, how financially illiterate people are. So we're going to have that on our system, too. I want to become like the Khan Academy of financial uh, financial literacy because I notice crypto guys know nothing about finance and the finance guys know nothing about crypto. Correct. So bring that's that happening. together too. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. That's happening. That I see together. it every day. So that's for yeah. sure. And it's yeah. going on so actively in the market. And there's another thing I wanted to mention here is the uh, commissions. How about commissions? Do you have lower Commi or higher commissions than the exchange? Commissions. This is. This is, where, this is where my experience on the financial side comes in. I've always paid low to no commissions as a member. And I believe true liquidity comes from low commissions. So the crypto exchanges, in my opinion, have extortion level commissions. As the price goes higher, the commission gets higher. <laughs> that doesn't make sense to me. Of course you know, 
It's a fixed commission. I on our platform, we're going to charge a fixed commission of no more than two fifty for one bitcoin, and a ratio for anything under that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to keep commissions low because I believe when commissions are low, people trade a lot, and that brings liquidity. When people are able to trade and make money on the simplest movement. Where right now these crypto exchanges charge big commissions and then they complain about liquidity. But the reason that there's no liquidity is high commissions. Of course. That's yeah. very normal. Everyone can understand that. And um, yeah. it's like you also mentioned that trading commissions can be more than 10 times cheaper than other exchanges. Absolutely. Think about it now. I mean, even at the cheapest crypto exchange for one Bitcoin, they're charging about $25. So we'll be at the $2.50 level. But then they say, they say, well, we have a maker-taker model. In my opinion, the maker-taker model is broken. <laughs> the, ones that really, the ones that really benefit from the maker-taker models are the algos. They're the ones that benefit. But for point-and-click traders, which is most crypto guys are point-and-click, they don't benefit from that maker-taker model. Yeah. Because the algo traders, in my opinion, are, they're, they're predatory. They take liquidity. They don't contribute liquidity. Yeah. Of course. All right. So what about the minimum commissions or minimum account size or any fee? To uh, there's, an there's a, on our platform, there's no minimum account size. We, wanna, we believe in wealth creation for all. So there's no minimum account size. There's no minimum commission. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we also want to, because crypto, you can fractionalize we're bringing fractionalization into the financial side. So you can buy $5 of Amazon if you want, $5 of Netflix if you want. You can buy fractions of the financial side. And we're gonna do that as a service to our customers also, the fractionalization of shares. Because people right now are so blocked out of the financial world because they don't have enough money. Most, most broker dealers, they want you to have a minimum account size of $10,000. And most people in the world don't have that. Yes, you know, they don't sure. have that. Yeah. For sure. Sure. Exactly. I mean, this industry comes down to the average Joe, right? In the society, the crypto space, it allows you to sell with five bucks. If you have that, exactly. just go ahead and do it. Exactly. That's what I'm bringing. So I'm bringing that from the crypto side to the financial side of, you know, most people don't have money for one share of Amazon at $1,000, but they have five or 10 bucks. And you know, Amazon is just going to go up for the next 10 years. <laughs> so it's nice to get on the ride even with a small amount of money. Of course, why not? If there's yeah. something to profit right. out of it, just exactly. take advantage of that, right? Just make sure that uh, you you join in the right places where you can profit more with a higher speed, which I also believe the crypto space is going to explode in 2018 in the way of, uh, like, you know, nobody's going to expect it right now. It's, it's not going to be something expected for a lot of people. What we're going to see in 2018, we could also imagine Bitcoin around thirty to fifty thousand dollars per coin, right? So I can definitely see that with this amount of money coming into with Bitcoin futures. Ab absolutely, especially with the institutional money that's going to be attracted to the Bitcoin futures. You know, institutions, pension funds, insurance companies, they can't trade the actual physical at a crypto exchange, but they can trade Bitcoin futures to get exposure to that. And they're all going to come in now. For sure. Yeah. It's the right time for them. Doors are open and it's the earliest possible, right? So in 10 years from now, uh -huh, <coughs> sorry, $100,000 per coin, it's just going to be a story. For sure, we're going to go... Yeah, absolutely. I believe that. I, I believe that. You know, I, I believe in the blockchain. That's why I, I've been trading it for so long. It's now, now's the turning point where we, now we start to get the mass adoption rate from the institutions and all this big money flowing in. And that's another reason why I created Anquaris to capitalize on all that financial money that's going to come in. Because they're not going to go to a crypto exchange, they're not going to go to a crypto broker, but they would go to a broker dealer. Of course. That's what they're used to. Yeah, absolutely. A crypto exchange probably is the last thing they will think of, and they would not even they would not even think of. That's kind of eliminated from the list. That's why they didn't join till now, right? In a space, so it's pretty yes. clear. Right? An exchange is so so risky. People can't even imagine what's behind the doors. Uh, not only that beautiful website you might see, that nice design or smooth, uh, you know, things which are running on their website. 
that's probably nice and if you just see that that's really bad for the industry you should see a lot more you should yeah. study a lot more about this thing how an exchange should be I think so and, and a, a lot of these exchanges you can't find out any information about have they been hacked before do they file yeah. reports on money loss oh that that'll never happen do they even file how many times in transportation help tickets that go outstanding that get resolved and the ones that don't get resolved right we don't really know how many help tickets get re don't get resolved and people are just out there frustrated and they have nowhere to go thousands of yeah. people daily thousands of people daily get frustrated because of the yeah. support of these exchanges of course mm -hmm. they take advantage of the industry because there's no competition yes that's when and, that, and absolutely and that's what I'm trying to bring into it some honest good competition that's ensured right so we're gonna see how that's gonna play and I'm sure it's gonna have a uh, huge advantage for industry as long as it's gonna run like this right so and of course there's no reason why it wouldn't be like this right so it's an all-in-one trading platform where you can do a lot yes yes yeah, yeah. that's that's Absolutely. pretty interesting that's pretty pretty interesting and that's something that we actually uh, needed to, to make this a lot more secure to make this have a sense mm -hmm. yes right, so uh, we're talking about you also have the option of international debit cards yes because your, your assets will be at the broker dealer we believe that you just could you have a debit card and it'll be a crypto debit card so you can buy bitcoins and put them in your crypto debit card and it's used anywhere being an American, Americans have a hard time getting credit cards outside of America, so we want to solve that problem for them too. You know, I believe that money should flow seamlessly like water, and that's what we're trying to do. If you have your money in the account, you can access it at any time without going through the bank by using your own debit card. That's exactly so what that, people need. That's just, an, that's just another added feature. That's to us. Some ICOs are out there just selling credit cards. To us, that's just an added feature and a convenience for our customers. Of course. Yeah. Of course, and it's necessary as well. That's why you have added it, because you understood Absolutely. the importance of this use of this service, right? So for sure, that's something to consider. Now, how about the educational platform it's going to be, right? The educational, educational platform. Right? Yes, the educational platform is going to be interesting. Our CTO, Sean, he worked for Zenga, and they're the guys that produce Farmville. He's working on a trading game for me because I want to have gamification on the platform. And that's where the ICO A and K coins in. I believe that people should learn how to trade first before they get into the markets. So it's going to be a whole gamification using our ICO A and K coins. And different levels lock, unlock as you, as you acquire more knowledge. You know, there's a, diff a lot of different things from crypto to options to futures. So the whole gamification is the whole learning aspect to us. Of course, that's why it's we're just developing a skill set, that. right? Exactly. That's the way I learned how to trade 25 years ago, playing a game. <laughs> playing yeah. a game, right? Yeah, yeah playing most a game. Of the time, it's kind of losing a little bit of money, yep. right? <laughs> yeah, that's the best way to learn. Yeah, I know. I can do that. Be, and it's going to be a, it's going to be a game where you cannot because I I know how to game trading games. This is going to be one that you cannot game. It's going to be built on knowledge. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be a really good better. trading game. I can tell you that. <laughs> it's even better. I, I've traded all of them. Yeah, not where you could over leverage yourself and cheat. No, it doesn't work like that in the no, real world. No, no cheating here. We're talking yeah, no pure cheating here. Skill yeah. see, skill sets, right, and then knowledge all around. The exactly. Topic, right? So, what about the over the counter orders? Uh, the over the counter, we. Uh, we're doing that as a service to bigger clients, institutions, and that'll be out of uh, that'll be out of Chicago. And what it is is for over a hundred thousand and between five hundred million, same day through a major bank. And we'll do the top ten coins and uh, any other coins on request. And we're doing it as a service for the bigger financial and bigger crypto guys that they want it at one price, they want it today, uh, can't source it anywhere else, and we'll do it for them. So we'll that's, do that for them. That's even yeah. better. That's even better because we all know liquidity is a huge problem exactly. for the whales. People want to sell out five million. There's nothing like that on an exchange just right away. Absolutely, yeah. No, and we can, we can, we can, 
Absolutely. And we could source that and get that done for them same day, and it goes out through a major bank. So there's no problems there. And of course, yeah. of course, that's something that uh, people, and especially the whales, which you're going to attract by having this feature, uh, mm -hmm. will be yeah. really, really... Uh, yeah, that's something that we have in the process right now, and it, right after the ICO, seven days after that, we'll be in that business, immediately after. Yeah. That's great to hear, that's great to hear. You have a lot of people working on this actively, right? Yes, yes, we have a lot of people working. Country managers, marketing advisors, there's a lot of people. And all of them have come basically because they believe in the product, they believe in the team, and they're contributing their time and their effort to it, which is great. And everyone sees the need for it in our system, in our crypto ecosystem. They see the need for it. That's the main so push. Right? That's, that's what's yep. pushing people. The need. Yep. The, the, the only thing is that we're not getting a lot of we're not getting a lot of visibility because the ICO uh, the ICO world is so overcrowded now. I think there's anywhere from 15 to 30 new ICOs a day now happening. <laughs> I've seen more than 30 in some days because I'm really continuously more than 30 in 24 hours. So can you wow. guys imagine that more than 30 possibilities? And I bet out of those 30, 90 percent of them, like 25, 27, 28, were just scams with something to show as a surface, like having a nice website. Having a you know design, you can buy those things. Having a nice white paper, again, you can buy those things. You don't need to be the smartest guy. You just need to have money to do something like this. You put them up on the internet. You have a Bitcoin talk forum. You have a nice bounty campaign. You do this, you do that, and then you fake the numbers on your website. You say that you have collected two million while you have collected only two hundred bucks. You say you're <laughs> sold out and you're not. And this kind of thing is just as marketing techniques and strategies, you know, all this, uh, all this uh, ICOs. And most of the times, I don't want to say all this, I just say most of the times when this scam going around, they have multiple rounds. And they keep saying they get sold out in the first one or two rounds just for marketing purposes. We're getting sold out in five hours, in 24 hours, in 48 hours. And then there's a lot of attention going around that topic because it got sold out in five hours, right? So the next round is where people jump in. But that's a marketing uh, technique. You have to be aware of that, guys. Uh, of course, it's not always like that. It happens to be sold out realistically for some of them. But most of the times, there's nothing like that. <laughs> so that's something people would have to think about, right? and uh, they would have to consider right now great projects can get lost so easily in this space of the ICOs but we can't even imagine and it's something you just have to do it like that you can you can have an ICO going on in seven days from a no-name person without any sort of knowledge around the topic right so you Absolutely. can have you can have that you just need money to pay people doing the surface Absolutely. I, I've seen it with a lot of ICOs. They spend a lot of money and even money they get in, they spend it on their marketing budget. And you see them all over the place with their pay-per-click ads. It, it's, it's, that's what you're absolutely right. I agree with you. I've experienced that by doing this ICO. There's just a lot of money that goes into marketing. The idea, like you said, it's a website, it's a white paper that they purchase and they just throw money at the marketing instead of doing it at the final product. Yeah. Of course, of course. I always told people that they have to look after products. They have to look what this company is really doing and what's the face of the business. Who is the owner? Mm -hmm. Right there, John, you can see him. He is the owner of the business. He's not hiding. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's something that not many people do nowadays in the ICO section, right? Really? So that's one thing really to consider about this. That's why. I was considering making an interview because this thing really brings value to the industry, in my opinion, right? So tell us three major problems solved by Anchorus. Well, the first one is ease of opening accounts. The second one is low commissions. And the third one is the platform, the all-in-one platform where all assets are there. Those are the three problems that we're solving right off the back. Without the other add-ons of the debit card, the trading game, 
we're trying to check all the boxes on that. But those are the three. We're making the trader's experience much easier and much more secure. And that's what we need in a nutshell. In a nutshell, yeah. that's what we need. The better experience, the more secure, it's a lot, you know, it gives us a better life, right? So it makes our life easier. We can sleep better as soon as we know that the money is secured over there and our profits are secured. Absolutely. It's securing, it's securing people's wealth and wealth creation by securing people's wealth. Yep. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So why do you think people, uh, and how do you think anchors will impact people's lives? Well, we, we expect more people to onboard with us than the crypto exchanges for the simple fact of all the things we're providing. And we'll make it a seamless experience for them. Uh, right now, you get so much frustration. We're also going to have a helpline, a live helpline. You know, most of these places with uh, support tickets, support tickets can be outstanding for up to months. I think that's totally intolerable. You know, I've experienced myself trading on these exchanges. So we're going to make it, like I said, we're going to make it an easier, smoother experience for people. And that will just bring in more people and that will inflate everybody's crypto prices. All their crypto coins will go up once they're able to be onboarded in such a smooth experience. That's true. That's true. And I know some people, a lot of students here, a lot of people talking about that they're looking to get their accounts approved for a higher level of withdrawal. Right, yes. and that takes sometimes even three to four months. Wow! Yeah, it happened. I have a case where the guy was sitting for six months to get his account approved at a higher level of withdrawal to raise the limits. You know, so that's crazy, and it's happening nowadays. And think about guys, what's going to happen in 2018 when the market is exploding even, even, even more? What's going to be with all these exchanges? What's going to? It's going to be. It's going to be. Extremely hard and an extreme backlog against it because most of the banks are afraid to move money for crypto exchanges but it's a different story for broker dealers it's easier it's easier to move money so a lot of this checks and going to different tiers is because they have to do all their KYC and AML for basically a virtual currency remitter which is what a currency exchange is for a broker dealer it's must it's much less yeah of course of course and I've seen that when there was a large amount of money coming into the space, people wanted to cash out Bitcoin at that time, and there was a delay of a couple of days. Yeah. Right? I remember that it was a yeah. couple of months yeah. ago. I've, I've, I've had tickets outstanding for five days when the market's collapsing, trying to get out of stuff that I wanted to sell, you know? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, surprisingly, DDoS attacks happen. I wonder yeah. if that's the exchange doing it to themselves. <laughs> I don't you know. know. I don't know, I can't be sure about that, but yeah, exactly. there's a lot of question yeah. around that topic, right? So, yes. um, this is a, a definitely a, a big problem. Think about 2018 is going to be a year where there will be a lot of money coming into that space. And how are these exchanges prepared to handle that? When they, in 2017, when we're talking about smaller numbers, of course, probably even 10 times smaller numbers than what's going to be in 2019, they were not able to handle the situation. Bitcoin was crashing. People cashed out because they wanted to sell out. And they got their Bitcoins in four days when the price Ooh. was already crashed like crazy. I saw that, I know. That, that's a good that's a good point if they had so many bottlenecks in 2017 and I experienced it because I traded from like uh, May I started again in March when I got everything open from March of last year there were a lot of bottlenecks and that's a good point you bring up in 2018 it's just gonna be a lot more by probably a factor of 10 if not by a hundred that's a good point I didn't think about that yeah so you have to be sure that the most important thing is there needs to be some security if you're making the money that's great but if you don't have security you can lose whatever you're making even with your you know funds you're depositing right so the first thing you really want to take care of is the security instead of just making profits because that's what people are looking after they buy you know little altcoins the small cap altcoins are looking for explosions and then selling off and then doing the same thing right so that's kind of very difficult to handle when nowadays there are so many scams going around the industry, right? Yeah. So uh, we have to also look for, for the security side. 
uh, which the Anchorus platform is going to help us to achieve it, right? Yes, absolutely. Well, that's because I, I've been on the other side, and that's what I want to. That's why I'm building this Anchorus specifically for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about the ANK token? Uh, the uh, the token itself, the ANK token. There's a hundred million, fifty million are sold to the public in our ICO. Uh, the founders are locked up for one year, so we can't sell our tokens for one year. The uh, advisors are locked up for six months, and uh, we started on November 25th. Our ICO ends December 25th. Uh, that's the 30 days. And right now, if you buy them, you get uh, the price is 400, and there's a 50% bonus right now. So for one ether, you get 600 ANK tokens, and those ANK tokens will be used on our ecosystem to pay for all our goods and services on the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. so Everything from use. commissions, data feeds to uh, the platform. Yep, that's where it'll be used. And then for more professional traders, we'll have different tiers, four different tiers of access, where they. Basically, they get the debit card, they get the uh, a much lower commission. Yeah. So they're yeah, basically they're like they're like uh, they're using the ecosystem like Amazon rewards points, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. It's really really interesting, and I like that it has a use in the system, so it's not just like a token to make money out of it. But on top of that, you've got your token tokens locked down for a year, so people could be more relaxed considering that. And can have more confidence. Oh, oh yeah, I'm 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 here for the long haul. I want I want to build this system out. I want to build this system out because I think before the traditional guys in the finance world jump in, it could be a year or two years, and by then we could be huge. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's that's realistically yeah. fine, and it's yeah. great to hear that, right? So. I'm going to drop the links to the project in the description area of this video presentation, guys, so you might look for everything you need. Consider doing your research and everything, of course. Uh, it's your choice on what you would like to consider. Uh, I'm going to drop, drop down the links uh, to everything that's going to be useful. And I think, like, we have reached to the end of this video presentation. Uh, it was a pleasure to be here with you, listening to all this helpful information for the ecosystem, for the industry uh, and I can see how you're bringing in a value to us because that's why I've decided to make this interview video presentation and, and put it out as a uh, great content in my opinion thank you very much thank you for having me I enjoyed talking to you thank you good so time. much and it's an amazing time have a yes, good time hopefully hopefully we'll see 50,000 Bitcoin by next year 50,000 and I'm, I'm expecting that Anywhere from I am 30 too. to 50. But then, 2020, too. I'm not going to see 2020 without 100 grand per token. I tell you, <laughs> that's going to be baby money. It's going to be, so hold your coins, buy more, buy more, because this is the space we're going to head towards. You can see that day by day. Uh, yeah. All right, buddy. Thank you so much for this one. Uh, it's going to be surely great for the people watching it, right? Thank you for having me again. Thank you. I'll see you soon.